Alright guys, UAC Rig version 2.8. This is a quick animation I put together to show some of the new features. We have a great terrain connection method available, and we can also rig up the boot, bonnet and doors, or the hood and the trunk if you prefer. There are a few other neat things as well, but before I get into it, I had quite a few emails asking if the UAC Rig works in Maya 2022. Yes it does. It works in all versions of Maya. I also had a few other common questions, so I put together an FAQ section at the bottom of the UAC Rig homepage. The link is in the description below, so check that out if you get the chance. If we open the new UI, the layout has changed a bit, mainly to simplify things. The CH and the LT buttons caused a bit of confusion, so they have been changed. The CH button is now this larger Include Chassis Model button, which is only available when the wheel count is set to 4. The LT button has been replaced by just setting the Tire Divisions button to zero. So if you want to load a rig with no tire deformations, now you just leave this at zero. If you do want divisions, this tire division button will jump from zero to 20, 48 and finally to 72 divisions. What does this mean exactly? The divisions are the number of joints that surround the outside and inside edges of each tire. Zero divisions has no tire joints, just a very basic wheel structure. The two joints just allow the width of the wheel to change for the size adjustments. At 20 divisions, which is the default deformation value it has always been previously, you can see we have 20 joints on the outside edge and 20 on the inside, 40 joints in total that support the whole tire deformation per wheel. And this will work for most cases and will give you a decent deformation like this, as long as your tire mesh is not too heavy. It will also benefit further from a subdivision after it has been connected. If your tire model is more detailed, maybe some modeled in tread for example, it will start to give you a crunchy or creased result like this. You can actually start to see the locations of the joints just by looking at the shape of the deformation. Not really what we want. This is where jumping up to 48 divisions will help you. The same modeled in tire mesh we just looked at using the 48 divisions. This result is much nicer and much smoother. But what if your tire is scan CAD data or just a heavily subdivided mesh? This kind of mesh is definitely not ideal for deformation, but it still holds up surprisingly well at 48 divisions. I've never needed any more than 48, but if we do get really close, you may start to see that creased crunchiness again. It's pretty nitpicky at this point, but you can jump to 72 to further smooth out the result if you need to. Keep in mind though, 72 joints is 144 per wheel. So use it only if you're actually going to see it clearly in your shop. Don't make your scene heavier than it needs to be. Next section I reorganized a bit. Added the dynamic control quick button to make the dynamic control visible. This just toggles the dynamics from the body controls dynamic attribute. It just toggles it on and off. Also added a top view camera button which has been pretty useful for connections. The connection area has had some pretty solid performance fixes. You'll notice a big speed increase in the connection times. Some referencing bugs were fixed, and that optimized prompt that popped up for some of you is now gone for good. Although you may receive a redundant influence warning in the script editor that will look something like this, which is nothing to worry about. You'll also notice that we have some new icons, so the UI is looking much cooler, and you can now connect doors, bonnet, and boot. On the root control you'll see those display attributes listed here, so just unhide the parts you need. I just move or snap your adjustment controls to where you want the pivots to be. You can use the camera buttons and isolate as well. Once your pivots are in place, just hit the connect button. And if we pop back to animation mode, these green square controls will allow you to animate these parts easily. It works well for going doors as well. You can just move the adjustment control up where the pivot would be and just hit connect. You can also use the rear doors like this, or you could move them all the way to the back, rotate them and use them as rear doors of a van. We also have these new display scale attributes which have been added to all of the animation controls. This will allow you to enlarge the controls easily if your vehicle is overlapping them. And don't forget you can also change 
the shape of the controls by just moving the CVs as well. The curve path section has not changed, just a bug fix regarding closed curves. If you added a loop or a circle as a path, it would add it, but actually open the curve and cause a little tiny gap in it. This is now fixed. And finally, we have the new terrain section. Extremely easy to use. I set up a quick demo here to show you in action. This is the shot you saw at the start of the video. The process I used here was similar to what I did in my Tesla truck on Mars tutorial. It's just a bumpy terrain mesh. I used the shrink wrap tool, placed a divided mesh plane onto the terrain. Not many divisions are needed. I repositioned it so I could visualize a clear edge loop path of where I wanted the vehicle to go. I selected the edge loop and just hit add selected curve path. This is the animation. Pretty simple, just a few keys on the path drive attribute moving back and forth. And then the doors popping open. You can see here the wheels are crashing into the terrain and actually the car body is as well. And with this terrain section we can fix this pretty easily. All we do here is just select the terrain and hit the green add selected terrain button. This will conform all of your wheels to the surface of your terrain mesh for the currently active vehicle. That's looking better. All the wheels are following the contours of the terrain. They're moving over every little jagged bump on this mesh, causing the vehicle to move a little bit too much in my opinion. So the next step I took was to duplicate the terrain. I trimmed it down a little bit and then just used the average vertices tool to soften the bumps down a bit. I'm going to remove the full terrain we were using by selecting it and hitting remove terrain. This will remove all vehicles attached to that terrain and the wheels will pop back into the reset position. And we can now select the average trim terrain and just hit add selected terrain. It's that simple. You can add and remove terrains as you please. It's pretty cool. And if we play this one, some of that abrupt unevenness is being absorbed and it gives you a much better result. So on each wheel, there is this new terrain link attribute, and this adjusts the amount of influence from the terrain connection. So this is worth using if the suspension is being stretched too far. You could reduce the value of the unseen wheels, pull that suspension back in a bit. The same attribute is on the drive control, but this one affects all wheels at once. There's also an offset attribute, which will control the distance between all wheel and terrain contact points, which is useful to sync all of the wheels into the terrain a little bit, or pull them back if you need to. This new connection method is solid, it's fast and very accurate. It eliminates any slipping that would occur with the wheel controls when we previously were using just geometry constraints on their own. What's now happening is there is a combination of geometry constraints and the Maya muscle system. I can drag the car all over the terrain, even off of it, and the controls will never slip out of place. Another little bonus is the wheel controls are free to move and be keyframed. You'll find that there are no constraints or anything laid on top of the primary attributes. So that frees them up to move them around if you need to as well. And that's it. You should have received an update email. If not, check your spam folder or use your original download link and it will take you to the update. As always, let me know if there are any issues. Thanks for watching guys. See you soon.